Carol Ann Sale, and uh, I'm a co-owner of Boggy Creek Farm along with my husband, Larry Butler. Larry Butler, Boggy Creek Farm. Young man. Handsome, brand new hat. So we started uh, farming here in 1992, and we decided way early after our first experience with seven dust that we would be organic. Um, we were told to put seven dust all over our tomato plants back in 1982, and we thought, well, for the insects, we thought, well, we don't see any insects, and how can the plants breathe with all this white dust all over them? So, so let's just wash it off and just do without. So we did. We didn't really understand what we were doing or why, but it just didn't make any sense to put powder all over a plant. East Austin was the farming community of Austin, and this is the bottom land. This is the farmland near the city, closest to the city, and this is where you farm if you want to farm in Austin. But we love it, and we love the people that come, and they become family after a while because we see them so much, and we're feeding them. It's a very intimate connection to know that the food that we've grown, that we've touched, that we've washed is going home with them in their bag, and then they're washing it, cutting it up, and feeding their family, and growing their children. But community is what has happened in this business. And um, there, of course, there's the community of the farm itself, only five acres here in, in the farm in Milam County. And our, our employees, most of them have worked for us for, well, for up to seven years. But we started just what we could do ourselves, and we worked that way for probably uh, two years, just the two of us. And then one day in, I think it was 1995, May, uh, the neighbor brought this lady over to the fence line and said, Carolina, come over here. I've got somebody who says she wants to go to work for you. And I thought, oh, who would want to? It's end of May. It was horribly hot. It's humid. It was unbearable. And I, so I started, and we were talking Spanish because she was Spanish speaking. And I said, well, this is horrible work. This is very hot and, you know, it's, it's terrible. And she said, ¿Qué le hace? It doesn't, it doesn't matter. I've worked in agriculture all my life. I, I understand it. I love working outside. And um, she started working, and um, she was wonderful. Andrea uh, is her name, Andrea de Luna. Por el trabajo que hago, sí, me hubieran sí, dicho, ya. ya vete. No, me gusta mucho el trabajo este porque se enseña a uno mucho a hacer cosas, de hacer y como le digo, de hacer y, y de cortar y todo eso se enseña a uno, ¿verdad? He ido a otras partes, ven a trabajar, ven a trabajar, limpiame la casa. <risa> ah, yo quiero quedarme aquí. No me voy, tengo que venir, porque si no vengo se me muere la señora. Sí, me dice, el día que no vienes, estoy triste porque no vienes. Porque ella, esto es lo que hago yo. Que a ella le gusta que le corte y como hago las cosas bien y todo, pues ella también lo hace bien, ¿verdad? Pero tengo más tiempo yo, ¿me entiendes? Y pues usted sabe que un trabajador siempre se impone con una persona, por su trabajo que le hace, sí. o por la amistad, o por algo, ¿verdad? Sí. Algo tiene que haber para, bueno. para hacer uno granjearlos y que ellos nos granjeen a nosotros. Then after a few years, uh, Don Socorro came, and he was this, at that time, he was about 70 years old, and we had lost one guy that was a temporary worker, and the word must have spread through the pipeline, because the very next morning, there's Don Socorro saying, yo quiero trabajar. And I looked at him, I thought, my gosh, this little old fellow, 80 pounds, old, so he started working for us, and he was a hoot. I mean, he would work. They both worked all day, you know, no break. They wanted to work. And I'd say, well, you know, take a break. No, no, saying, you we're gonna, we're going to keep working. We're going to get this road done. So I just gave up on that break stuff. And they got along real good, the old man and the young woman. That went on for a while, and then uh, Don Socorro said, well, my brother-in-law, Don Lupe, he needs work. So he came, and he went up to the other farm and helped Larry.
And then during the big tomato time, Maria, Luffy's wife, came to work too. And so she went up there also. And they worked up there pretty much primarily up to the other farm. And Andrea and Don Socorro and I worked this farm. But then during the winter, Don Luffy and Maria had to come back here because we didn't grow in the winter up there. And Andrea is kind of the, she's kind of the neighborhood watch, and, and she busts most of the criminals, but occasionally I get in there too. <laughs> Believe it or not, somebody came in a couple of weeks ago and stole about $60 worth of chard, Swiss chard. <laughs> yeah, it's oh, okay. the craziest thing in the world. <laughs> and then in the spring, somebody came in and stole tomatoes two nights in a row and sold them at the flea market. <laughs> so, you know, at least we know our crooks. One, one time, Don Lupe was up at the other farm, but he would ride his bicycle to work. And so one time she did steal his bicycle. So I thought, well, that's it. So I run out and jump in one of the trucks, just like Roy Rogers jumping on trigger. And sure enough, when I turned that corner, there she was, pedaling down the street, just as happy as can be, just slowly. So I pulled up behind her and just laid on the horn. And she stopped and got off and, okay, what do you want? She didn't speak much Spanish at all, so it was all in English. And so I started screaming at her that she'd stolen that bicycle and to lay it down immediately. And she said, no, I didn't steal this bicycle. Don Socorro gave me this bicycle. I said, Don Socorro did not give you the bicycle. He's in Mexico, and that's Don Lupe's bicycle, and you've stolen it. Second bicycle you've stolen, so put it down. And so she put the bicycle down, which actually surprised me. And so I let her off. We're probably in the, the medium of the economic strata in East Austin. We don't make a lot of money because we're farmers. So I feel like we kind of fit in, you know, because it's, it's supposed to be the poor side of town. At least that's what they say, although I don't really see it that way. It's, to me, it's rich in a lot of the simple joys and family life. So I know they love the earth and they love the beauty, and I want to be with that kind of person. It's East Austin to us is, is home, and I hope to be an old lady here someday with my chickens. <laughs>